Hi, my name is Vance Locke and I'm the Director of Undergraduate Studies here in the School of Psychology at UWA. And I'm going to be talking to you today about doing a major in psychology. Psychology at UWA can be studied through either the Social and Applied Psychology major or the Neuropsychology and Cognitive Science major. Of course, to become a psychologist and to be registered as a psychologist in Australia, you need to complete both of those majors. But for the rest of this video, I'm going to concentrate on the Neuropsychology and Cognitive Science major. The first year of that major, there's two units you have to complete. So the first of the units that you'll undertake in first year is called Mind and Behaviour. Now that unit deals with many of the facets of the human mind that you wouldn't often think of as something that psychologists would be interested in. So for example, how the brain works. Now on face value you think that's really an important thing for psychologists to be interested in. But usually we think of these things as maybe related to neurosciences or anatomy. And that's true to some extent. What psychologists are interested in is what those parts of the brain do. How do they relate to memory? How do they relate to language? How do they relate to everyday life and your ability to do things? Also in that course you'll learn about things like how we memorise things, and the kinds of errors you get with memory. So for example, during eyewitness testimony. So if you're called up by the police or through courts and you need to give testimony about something, what do you need to know about how memory works to ensure the best recollections are available? Now the other unit done in first year is called Behaviour and Context. Now that unit deals much more with the person as a whole. It's not interested so much in what happens in the brain but how the person as a whole integrates into society and how they change over their lifespan. So in that unit we'll be looking at things like how we change from when we're infants through to when we're older. We'll also be looking at things like social psychology, which is how groups interact, how prejudice occurs, how we judge people. We're also going to look at things like personality, what makes us different, what makes me an extrovert and you an introvert. And lastly, we're also going to look at what happens when these things begin to go wrong. So abnormal or clinical psychology. Related to that, the last applied area we'll look at in that unit is industrial and organisational psychology. So how psychology works in the workplace, how it allows us to interact with other people, to get the most out of ourselves and others. So now let me talk about second and third year in the Neuropsychology and Cognitive Science major. Now in your second and third year of this major, we have some compulsory units and we have some optional units. Now the compulsory units focus a fair bit on research methods. Now these involve some statistics, but the real emphasis isn't on you becoming statisticians. It's on helping you understand how psychologists work out how and why people do things. In other words, the research tools we use to understand human beings. Now with that light, in second year you have the unit called Psychological Research Methods. Now that unit is designed to give you a very basic introduction to some of the fundamental psychological measurement tools we use. So how do we measure people's personality? How do we measure attitudes? And some of the very basic statistics we use. So how do we compare two groups? Now we're not interested in you becoming statisticians or even psychological researchers in the end. But we are interested in you becoming active and thoughtful and thorough users of psychological knowledge into the future because we don't want your education to end after three years. We want it to be ongoing for the rest of your life. In that vein, after the second year research methods units, there are two third year research methods units. But these are, I think, a little bit more fun and don't come across as dry as they perhaps sound. The first of them is research design and analysis. And that's really focusing on the kinds of analyses and the kinds of questions and measurements you might take when doing experimental research. Now that experimental research can, can vary wildly. It can be anything from really basic neurological processes, how your brain works, through to how people work in groups. So how do we judge people differently based on their gender? Do we treat people differently just because they're older? The kinds of research methods that we talk about in that unit allow us to address those questions. Now the other compulsory research methods unit is the specialist research topics unit. And that's where we let you get your hands dirty. Basically we take 15 in a group, we assign you into smaller groups of around four or five, and we let you conduct your own research. 
with of course a postgraduate and an academic to keep an eye on you. We let you get in there and do it. Everything from writing ethics, to running an experiment, helping program if you want, and then analyzing and writing it up. It's basically your chance to do some psychological research. And we're fortunate because in the school with the kind of quality teachers we've got, many of these projects have in fact been published. The first of the optional units is atypical development. And it focuses on the changes across our lifespan and in particular, what can go wrong. Everything from birth, so we talk about things like syndromes that you might all be aware of, things like Down syndrome, through to what happens when you get older. So things like Alzheimer's disease and how that impacts on our development. Also looks at things that can happen through accident, such as head injury, trauma, etc. The second optional unit in second and third year that you can take in the Neuropsychology and Cognitive Science major is Cognitive Psychology. Cognitive Psychology looks at the way we think, how we remember, how we memorize things, how we pay attention to things. Now, on the one hand, there's some very basic processes we're interested in in that unit. But we do take it beyond that to ask questions like, how does that help inform us about how we can do things at a really high level of skill? Everything from running a submarine through to air traffic control work. Other option in second and third year is cognitive in neuroscience. And that really looks at the interface between cognition and the mind, or the brain in this case. So the kinds of things we might learn about in cognitive science, like how we attend to things, how we learn, what we think, how does it relate to the brain? How is it instantiated in the brain? Where in the brain is it? And how do changes to the brain influence the way we think about the world? So what you can see there is when we're interested in the interface between cognition and the brain, we begin to look at topics like head injury. So what happens when part of our brain gets damaged through stroke or through trauma? or indeed through Alzheimer's. How does it change the way we think and feel about the world? And the last optional unit available to you in second and third year is perception and sensory neuropsychology. Now that deals with the way we perceive our world. Now that's an interesting topic for psychology because on one hand, a lot of what you perceive about the world is determined by the mechanics of your, your mind and your eye and your hands and your tongue and your ears. Those basic biological systems help determine exactly how we perceive the world. But once it's come into the sensory system, our mind does some amazing things with it. It fills in blank spots in our vision. It determines where people are speaking from with very little information. And that unit's dedicated to helping you understand how we perceive the world, not just the mechanics of it, what our mind does with that information. If you study both psychology majors, you can go on to complete an honors degree or a fourth year in psychology. Completing a fourth year is a necessary step if you want to become a psychologist because you need at least four years study in psychology to become registered as a psychologist with the Psychology Board of Australia. But for the moment, let me just focus on what that fourth year, that honours degree, actually looks like. A little over half that degree will actually involve doing an individual research project. You'll be paired up with a supervisor in the school and you'll conduct research independently on your own for a whole year. Now that may involve interacting with a group. So for example, some of our students interact with off-campus groups. For example, some will look at things like Parkinson's. Some will look at school children, how they develop, how they learn, or maybe even the emotional difficulties they have. Some will work closely on the university campus, working with issues to do with prejudice, reading, perception, intelligence, a whole range of issues relevant to everyday people and everyday life. The other part of the honours year involves three units. Those units, much like your second and third and first year units, ask you to do a particular topic in depth. But at fourth year level, you can imagine we're asking you to do a lot more in depth than you have so far. One of those units looks at the big questions in psychology. So for example, what's happiness? What's consciousness? Another one of those units looks at specific research methods that might help you with your research project and allow you, when you become a psychologist, to understand the kinds of research people are producing in your field. And the third unit is really looking at specific topics related to the application of psychology. So for example, how do you use the things you've learned in second and third and first year in everyday situations that psychologists might work in, from organizations to working with individual clients or working with people with head trauma 
or children, a whole range of different areas. After honours, many students will go on to postgraduate degrees. Now there are two types I'm going to talk to you about. The first is what we call professional postgraduate degrees, and these really are to qualify you to work in specific fields of psychology. And secondly, I'm going to talk about the research-oriented degrees. Let me start with the professional ones. There's two main professional areas we teach to here in the School of Psychology. The first is one you're probably familiar with, and that's clinical psychology. Now, clinical psychology requires you to do at least a minimum of two years of extra training after your honours degree. So that takes you through to at least six years. Here at UWA, we offer a couple of different ways of doing that. One is the Doctor of Psychology, and that's going to take you a minimum of three years. And that involves some advanced clinical psychology training, along with some advanced research training. And then there's what we call a Master's PhD double degree. And that offers you, again, advanced clinical training, but with a full-blown PhD. Now, both of those allow you to call yourself a doctor at the end. Most importantly, they allow you to register as clinical psychologists, which is a specialist topic that the Psychology Board of Australia confers to only people who have completed that level of training at universities. At the end of honours, many students will want to go on and become professional psychologists. And we offer two degrees teaching to the professional areas of psychology, One's industrial organisational, working in businesses, human resources, human relations, and also clinical psychology, which you're probably more familiar with, which looks at things like affective disorders, ageing, trauma, all the kinds of things you usually see on television psychologists doing. And also we offer a research degree or a PhD for those students interested in becoming researchers and contributing to the body of knowledge that psychology produces about how we work and how best to treat people. After those postgraduate qualifications, our students go on to many different careers. It all depends on what they trained in. So for example, those who've done clinical degrees or clinical postgraduate degrees go on to work in the government, the health department, they might work with the elderly, with kids, they might work with drugs and rehab. There's a whole range of different careers open to them. These days, increasingly, we're seeing them work in private practice as well. If you go through the industrial organizational stream, you might find yourself working for a business, you might find yourself working in human relations, selections, really personality testing. So many organisations use psychologists now in lots of different situations from how to select people to how to get the best performance out of them. And finally, of course, there's our PhD program where we have graduates not only working in universities, some of the top research institutions around the world, but also working for things like government agencies like DSTO, Defence Science Technology Office, through to private employers who want psychologists with both the research skills and the knowledge to help them do everything from marketing to designing the best kind of lenses for glasses. So no matter what path you take, hopefully you'll find psychology to be enjoyable and interesting as you progress through the years. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you in class sometime.